2001 plus 556 minus, you know what? I'm so much better at using a calculator, but this abacus here is a symbol for wealth, prosperity, and business at this business hall, or rather a club, where people used to come and meet, network, and exchange ideas, trade, and interact with each other. It's pretty cool. The Kaifeng Shanshan Gan Guild Hall is an architectural must-see in Kaifeng. With a history of over 200 years, the Guild Hall is renowned for its stone, brick, and wood sculptures that are exquisitely elaborate and lifelike. The traditional North Region style architecture and design are showcased in the columns, panels, and rooftops of the building. Intricate carvings line the place that was once a home away from home for businessmen from the Shaanxi province. The most famous carvings here are that of the dragon, and the detail is so precise that even the pearl in its mouth is carved into a perfectly shaped ball. In 1642, Kaifeng was flooded with water from the Yellow River by the Ming Dynasty army to prevent a peasant rebel by the name of Li Zicheng from taking over. The city was abandoned, but today you'll find remnants of the old city buried under this lake, a new city atop an old. After the Yellow River flood, the only building that remained from the Song Dynasty period was the Iron Pagoda. Built in 1049, the Iron Pagoda is one of the earliest constructions made of glazed bricks and tiles in China. Don't be fooled by its name, it was actually named Iron Pagoda because of the iron grey colour of its glazed bricks. Standing at 55 metres high, this octagon shaped tower resembles a pillar carved with intricate patterns of Buddhas, flowers, human figures, and legendary animals. It's not hard to appreciate the fine workmanship from the Song Dynasty. The details and the carvings are amazing, and in different lighting conditions, you'll see the beautiful change of color from the glazed tiles. I've just gone up 13 levels of the Iron Pagoda. I wouldn't recommend it if you're claustrophobic. But I love heights, so I had to see the view from up top. And I'll tell you this, it is so amazing and totally worth it. We travel off the beaten track to the town of Jushan, a quaint place not far from Kaifeng, in search of some peace and quiet. It's nice to get away from the hustle and bustle of Kaifeng for a while, and it feels so relaxed being here. It seems like this is a wood carving of some sort, but he's making really intricate dents into the wood, and it doesn't seem like it's just wood. What do you think it's for? Hmm? Oh. Uh. With a history of over 800 years, Jusian Town woodblock mirror pictures are one of the oldest folk woodblock arts in China. Local people still use the traditional printing techniques to produce these now. That's pretty good for a beginner, I reckon. Each painting has five colors, and each color has to be matched to the right 
spot. And that takes years and years and years of practice before somebody is able to achieve that. So I'm going to stick to doing the black outline for now. The first wooden block prints the black and white outline. Traditionally, five colors are used for the Zhuxian print, which means five other blocks of wood need to be carved at the exact part and matched up to the area in the painting that requires that color. This traditional art form is often seen on the doors and walls of houses around New Year, but they are so beautiful that they are often left all year round. Once the print is done, it's aired over a cold flame for a quick dry before being hung outside to complete the process. Woodblock prints are available around China, but Zuxian has its own unique style and themes. The usual themes are exercising ghosts and conferring blessings, gods and customs, and theatrical and historical legends. In Zuxian prints, the lines are simple and strong, and the people depicted in the paintings have big heads and small bodies. I'm helping to prepare for the chrysanthemum festival that occurs annually in mid-October. Chrysanthemums are the golden flower in Chinese culture. Blooming in autumn as others fade, it symbolizes robustness and nobility. It also happens to be Kaifeng City flower. Every year, thousands and thousands of chrysanthemums are grown to prepare for the annual Kaifeng Chrysanthemum Festival, which takes place around October. It was so refreshing to see these two sisters walking amongst the chrysanthemum pots, just enjoying some of Mother Nature's gifts. On a day-to-day -day basis, though, the lives of people in Kaifeng are simple and understated. They enjoy the simple pleasures of life, and while it might not be as glorious as it once was in the Song Dynasty, the people of the city still maintain the nobility of their ancestors. The Kaifeng Night Market at the Ancient Tower Square is one of the most famous throughout China. People from as near as the neighboring town of Zhengzhou and visitors from various parts of China come here to sample the local snacks. I love night markets. Whenever I go traveling, I love seeing what local people like to eat, and I love the energy, the hustle, the bustle, and all these various different things that, you know, the locals enjoy. Half of these things I haven't even seen before. I mean, this lady here, she's making little dumplings, and I've had dumplings, but mostly at Chinese restaurants, and, like, to see it being freshly made right in front of you is just fantastic okay. stuff. Lit by fluorescent lights of the stalls, it's hard to just walk past the rows of uniform carts, the welcoming calls of the vendors, and the symphony of clattering dishes. The only problem is deciding what to eat. In Kaifeng, they don't have a unique light nightlife, but people still enjoy their night food market. Kaifeng's night food market is famous across China for their glorious suppers. There's so many delicious snacks on offer, like braised fish, dumplings, baked meat cakes with beef fillings, 
sweet porridge, amantini, stewed pears. Oh, I could just go on. These different snacks guarantee that there'll be something for everyone. Wow. I think it's going to be a combination of bean sprouts and... Mmm, smells like onion and, and spring onion and... and Oh, he's mixing it with some vegetables. That's a pretty healthy supper. The different quarters of the market specialize in different snacks. So make your way to Bogey Market if you're after some liangfen. Or try the steamed dumplings called Jialong Baozi, which are my personal favorite. Let me tell you, you've never tried a real dumpling until you popped one of these little pieces of heaven into your mouth. There's even a special technique for eating them, oh, but yum. you'll just have to visit to so learn it. Good. I'm going to have some of this for sure, right now. Oh my god, this is so good. For the more adventurous eaters, shoot over to the crossroads at Geo Road, where you'll find dozens of stalls selling chicken blood soup. I'm not entirely sure that's my thing, though. But for the more conservative carnivores, check out the roast chicken, beef, and mutton vendors at Beidao Gate, or the wonton stalls at Wu Chao Gate. The market is open all night long, so if you feel like a little midnight snack or 3 a.m. post-alcohol grub, you'll be spoilt for choice. And after that, if you feel like a little tour of the town, take a rickshaw from the night market back to the hotel. I fully recommend it. Kaifeng is a glorious old city with around 3,000 years of history and today still retains much of the charm, mostly in a small area enclosed by the old city walls. The city wall has been destroyed so many times. The wall you're looking at is only 150 years old? The Song Dynasty was one of the most prosperous periods in China's history. While the city is no longer in its full glory, when you come here, you'll still be able to experience the richness of its culture and history through replications and reenactments of these past days. This journey has been full of both history and culture. I feel as if I've absorbed it just by being here. I hope you've enjoyed Kaifeng as much as I have. In the meantime, keep those bags packed, and I'll see you next time on Travelogs. This is Michelle Lean.